Good morning. Sorry for the delay. Um, sorry for the delay. It was my fault. I missed opening one of the features. Ah, so many variables to manage. Sometimes the Wi-Fi doesn't work and sometimes it's just my fault. All right, so this is the platform we're going to use. If you have a blurry screen, just refresh the page. <clears throat> refresh your, your page. I don't know why that happens, but um, maybe when it's not so active, it just slows down on the bandwidth. I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Is it clear? So I sent you the prontuario for the class. We're going to discuss that. I'm going to f identify if I've, I have any errors. And then if I need to revise it, I'll send you the revised copy. Okay, very good. Sounds clear. All right, so if you see a blurry screen, refresh. You can speak to me in Spanish. You can type in the chat in English. If you want to text me, oh, I should get my phone. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm just going to get my phone. One moment. All right, so if you want to text me privately, you can text me at uh, my phone number um, that's provided here. So you can text me through WhatsApp or, you know, I have, a, I have an iPhone, so you can just text me with iMessage. I will be lecturing in English. English is my stronger language. I do understand Spanish and I can communicate in Spanish um, but I prefer to lecture in English, otherwise it creates a distraction and we do not need any more distractions that we have. I uh, wanted to first say I appreciate your agreeing to take this class on Friday. Some of you don't have an option. I know you just need this class to graduate. Um, uh, but I really appreciate it. It works for my schedule because I am the director of the department and during the week there's just... I could spend the whole day just doing emails. So um, this is really helpful because I do not technically work as a director on Friday. So I have my Friday dedicated to you in the morning. And if you have any um, questions or you want to meet with me, I can meet with you after class. All right. So that's my Friday is dedicated to you. You can write in the chat, like I say, you can text me if you want to privately comment. And um, at any point, you know, we can, I can host office hours. I have here that um, office hours are by appointment. We can meet through WhatsApp. We can meet also in what I call an office hour where I open up a live stream and I, and I show you or demonstrate what it is um, you're having trouble with, I can provide additional instruction or direction, all right? The platform YouTube permits us to, um, well, permits us to, to chat. Um, it will record the chat, as long as there's not an interruption in the stream, the chat will be recorded. As well, the captions will be provided after the class. It's not live stream captions. I don't know how to make that happen. And I've noticed they're not very good either. So uh, as long as I speak clearly, you will have the captions in English after the video posts. And also you can translate them to Spanish if that helps at all. It's not perfect, but 
is an additional resource. The other thing I like YouTube for is that I get to stream my tablet and um, that's for this class. It's a quantitative class primarily so um, my tablets my platform so I can I my my writing on the tablet isn't perfect either <laughs> but it's um it's just hard with the I have the Apple pencil working with the Apple pencil and learning how to uh, print clearly is my latest challenge um let me think about what else I wanted to tell you at the outset so here's the website if the by now, I think you know where our website is. Um, also, I I didn't put it here, but I do have a Facebook page. I think I've invited you all to the Facebook page. <clears throat> There's like 60 people on the page. That's where I can post updates uh, more efficiently than on our um, than on our departmental page in the UPR system. Editing this page is. It's not so easy. The credentials change often, and I don't have full control of that page. But I do have full control of the Facebook page. All right. Any comments so far? And then I'll get into the syllabus. Attending this lecture is important. Let me say it that way. I will have trouble monitoring whether you're really here or even if you're here, whether you're paying attention. It's often the students um, drift off or they get distracted or I don't know. I, I notice it's always the same three people responding to my questions. So uh, I imagine the others are distracted or um, maybe shy to respond. So. Uh, I really encourage you to be here and be as alert as possible. I know it's 9 a.m. on Friday. Um, stay uh, as alert as possible, and if you drift off, that's that's understandable. But maybe you'll pick up something um, in at least seeing things once. You know, at least seeing things as I I present them, and then you can watch the review. What I'm going to do, another advantage of the YouTube platform is I can create timestamps and the timestamps could help you um, navigate the video once it's been posted, All right? I have a, an assistant, a teaching assistant who will grade your tests and will help me with the timestamps. That's how I'm working with him. He's fantastic. Um, that's Ignacio Portela, I think that's his name. I think I've said it right, and um, so he'll be he'll be listening to this live stream and and adding in the timestamps after a day or so. If you have uh, if you have um, any place in the video that you want to mark, you can also in the comments add a timestamp, and we can add it to the description. So if you don't know what a timestamp is, uh, let me know. If you don't know what a timestamp is. So I can show you at some point. There is a bit of delay uh, between when I speak and when things appear. So you'll notice that. Um, don't have any other way to fix that. So the Facebook address, I think it's the same. Now I can't remember. I have to check. Let me verify. I'm going to be verifying the Facebook address. I think it's just Finansify. Okay, all one word, okay. All right, I'm sending it in the chat.
Right. The timestamp is like if the video had sections. Exactly. Thank you, Alfredo, Diego. Yeah, so I'm going to put a notice like you'll see timestamp like this. And when you click on it, you can go to that um, part of the video. Exactly. Okay, so you guys mostly know. Um, so you'll see it in the description. Timestamps will appear in the description. Okay, you can hear my teclados, right? Let's see if I can use the external keyboard. There's lots of things to consider here. All right, so let's see what I've done. And you can, again, I said I would revise this if necessary. You can see here I have the last day of class listed um, for Semana Santa. The second is uh, <coughs> canceled or this is the receso académico, so we won't have class. And the final exam is to be determined. I will wait for the exam schedule so that you will take the final test during the exam schedule, um, as scheduled. Otherwise, I have three tests that I'm putting on Saturday. Now, the way it works is I am going to send you a test that you should be able to complete in one and a half hours. It will be handwritten, no typing, your own handwriting, and you will send it back to me. You have this window in which to complete the exam, okay? 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Anyone who has trouble with that time, please let me know. You can email me about it um, or you can tell me now but it's going to be on Saturdays. Now, even if you guys are away, or um, I guess if you're working, it's gonna be a problem, so you have to let me know if you cannot control your work schedule, we'll, we'll work something out, but if 95% um, of students can do this, I will stick with this, otherwise I might have to change things. But I prefer this so that we can have all the lectures, we need all the lectures, and then uh, on Saturdays, you dedicate to the test and you can use all the resources available to you. I will not be monitoring the tests, except so all resources include you know, notes, videos, etc but no human assistance. Except if you have a question for clarification, you can ask me. Okay, so no human assistance. In real time. Okay, so in, you can't ask anyone. You cannot communicate with each other, and um, I will have to take corrective action if I find out about it, or if some student tells me about it, which often happens. Students um, find it unfair, and they do let us know when other students are cheating. So don't do that, and there's no need, really, because um, you have all the resources, so it's really up to you. You know, this is... Uh, these tests will be fair, and you won't have any reason. Uh, if you can let me know if the, you don't think they're fair, but they should be fair, and you won't have any reason to um, be desperate and cheat or risk being caught so or reported on. So um, also the, the TA will, when he's grading, will note if there are students who have very similar answers, okay? Um, unusually similar answers, and then I'll, I'll investigate that. So this is um, very mature of us to trust each other on the honor system that you will complete this test. It, the test should take you one and a half hours. It, some students use the full time and it deepens their understanding of the topic, which is great. 
You'll notice in the documents I sent you, I do provide you with review exercises and those are intended to prepare you for the test. So you're constantly studying for the test in advance of the test. I've spread them out by four or five weeks and the last test will be on the last Saturday <clears throat> or like the last week of class. Well, there'll be one more class, let me think. Yeah. Yeah, there'll be one more class on the 7th. And then the final exam will be cumulative and it will be on Connect with a proctor, with a camera. So another reason why you should work on your own is so you can practice preparing for the proctored exam. Okay, now we're gonna use, a, you need a camera. Some students borrow a webcam from their friends, but really with the computer camera, you should be able to uh, use that just with no problem. So I used the camera last semester and it worked very well. It will record you writing the test. You should uh, avoid having to go to the washroom. You should be prepared. It's a th it'll, it will be a three hour sitting, so um, you will need to be on camera the entire time. The final test is not hard. Uh, I'm saying that it's a review and the questions are from Connect. And I'll talk about the Connect um, service in a moment. Make sure you buy the textbook so you can at least, at the minimum, uh, write the final test. <clears throat> but there will also be assignments on Connect for 10%. The final test is worth 30. Francisco, yes, the tests are in English. And so my materials will all be in English. But, you know, you have a lot of time here and you can use a, a, tech, um, a translator or you can use a, um, a dictionary and pay for a translation. And, you, and I will be available during the test. You can text me. The textbook is in English, the notes are in English, I will be teaching in English. And um, students have not complained about it by this time in the fourth year most. I think in the 10 years I've been teaching, one student had trouble and otherwise I haven't heard of any trouble. So if you are having trouble, don't hesitate to let me know. And we can do something because we have the TA and the TA can work with you. All right, um, the TA can work with you. So the contents of this course are intended to prepare you for the CFA exam. By this point, so the Chartered, chartered Financial Analysts, there's the Society of Chartered Financial Ad Analysts and they provide a series of exams and the first exam um, the first exam is uh, something we focus on. Um, the material of this course should be sufficient to, for, to cover 70% of the material on the CFA exam. I'm actually having that analyzed by the CFA Institute. I'm um, going to be applying for affiliation. So you can be sure that if you're interested, you should have what it takes. And I've had students in the past let me know that they felt um, prepared to study, you know, to begin studying for that exam. They felt very strong after taking this, this class. Okay. Uh, proctor means with a camera. Okay, so the proctor is going to be implied because uh, your camera will record you writing the final test. Okay. 
Okay, so you can write in the chat in Spanish. That's fine with me. I will follow most of the time. All right. So this course, it will pick up from 3106. And I will repeat concepts in 3106, but go deeper, ma, ma profundo in the topics, okay? So if you feel you can... Um, what's happening? I'm trying to erase this. If you feel that you need um, review, I will provide most of the review that you think you'll need. Surprisingly, I've taught this course for a while, 20 years, and um, and there are concepts that students need review. In particular, statistics is a hallmark of this course. You'll need that topic, I mean, you'll need that skill, the skills you learn in MECU. So I will actually review, I will spend a class or two reviewing statistics as well. All right, the highlights, what you really need for this class and for, um, to do well in this class. All right, so again, if the screen gets blurred, if, if the screen gets blurry, refresh. Refresh the page, All right? Okay, so I have listed the objectives here. Time value of money, WAC. Some things that you might not have seen before are capital structure and dividend policy. And I'll spend some time. I'll definitely uh, help you with uh, capital structure and optimal capital, capital structure calculation, value of the firm. And different theories will end with different theories of dividend policy. Recognizing the ethical dilemmas in finance We'll spend some time on that. What I want to do is invite you to participate in the ethical ethics challenge that's being promoted by the uh, Society of Chartered Financial Analysts in Puerto Rico. I understand eight students have already registered but they need nine students to actually launch the event. So we are, um, you know, I, I'm going to be helping recruit students. So I'm, I can't force you to do it, um, but I guess I could, but I'm not going to force you to do it. I highly recommend you participate. You, I have it included here on the third page that um, you register for the event. I put the form here, I linked it. It's going to be a virtual event. They, if you register as a single person, they will put you in a group. And the, Charles Carpenter, Professor Carpenter, will be the advisor, student advisor, and he will help prepare you. He will help mentor you in solving the ethical problem or the ethical dilemma you're presented with. All the groups will have the same dilemma, and they will be asked to make a presentation in response to the the dilemma and, and what they would propose a remedy. I don't know the question. I've never participated myself, but I will attend. Some of you who don't want to participate but want to attend, that will be an option too. I'll be sending information about the details for attending. The event will be in February, but the registration is uh, January 26th. That's the deadline, okay? So if at least one of you can register, that would be great. If all of you could, that would be amazing. Um, maybe in the future, I'll make it a requirement. I just have to see what it entails. Let me see the dates. They sent me the dates for the event. Did some of you not get the link? I sent the message about the link for today's class. Um, make sure your my, my emails are not going to your junk or spam filter.
I'm just getting the details. Okay, so it's going to be on February 24th at 2 p.m. Let me see what kind of days these are. February 24th to Wednesday. And February, January 26th is a Tuesday, okay. So the details are that the event takes place um, February 28th. Okay, there will be a kickoff event on January 28th. I'm going to try that again. January 28th at 2 p.m. And then the final event will take place February 24th at 2 p.m. Now this is an opportunity to meet individuals who are chartered financial analysts in Puerto Rico these people um, often have or they are they're looking for bright students to hire and they, this would be a first opportunity you have to meet these people they they will serve I think there'll be five judges and they'll serve um, as the adjudicators of the presentations and it'll be an opportunity to meet these people that interests you so it, I think the 24th uh, and the 28th, the 28th is a Thursday and the 24th is a Wednesday. If you have other activities, you can let your professors know. And I can talk to them about your absence if that's necessary. Okay, and this is um, just clarifying the time, Atlantic time, yeah. Any comments? If you see your screen is freezing as well, <laughs> refresh. All right, my seems to. So if you notice that I am saying things that aren't on the screen, refresh the screen. These are all things that the downside of YouTube. I don't know why it does that. Okay, so refresh and you can see my notes. If you think I'm going too fast, take a screenshot. Okay, so you can have that for your for your review later. All right. Back to the syllabus. All right, so I was just reviewing the objectives. So with the CFA Institute, you're going to learn about the code of ethics in the, for finance. Um, according to the CFA, the Chartered Financial Analysts Institute. So um, as well, I've, I've provided a link to the code of ethics and we will spend some time discussing this topic maybe after the event it might stimulate some interest and um, so I do encourage you to attend the event the event I'm talking about the February February oh I put it on the other page
Yeah, the February 24th event. Okay. Questions? So I'll send you an email with those details as well. I'm going to send them to all the finance students. Okay, the textbook. The textbook for this course is Breely Myers and Allen. It's the most recent edition and it should be available in Connect for $50. I will get you the information about how to purchase that. Um, the $50 cost will give you digital access. If you want a physical copy, I'm looking at options to purchase the physical book and the physical book is like a paper book well it's all paper but it will be um like a soft cover book so i'm going to find out about the options for that as well but this fifty dollars will get you the text in digital form and access to uh, problems that i will post uh, continuously i've mentioned the adjective continuously but that could be every two weeks, every three weeks. And um, I'll talk about that in a moment. What you need to purchase for this class is the calculator as well. Okay, you need this book and you need this calculator. Now, if you have trouble finding it, I don't think you should in Office Max, Office Depot, or uh, even Walgreens has it. Um, you can buy it on Amazon. The other option is to purchase it on a smart device, smartphone, or a. Um, I even found it on the iPad. Actually, I found it for free on the iPad. Or tablet, I'll say tablet. Okay. And for on the phone or on, on a tablet, it costs about. $15. Any questions about that? Now there's other brands, okay, that are either free or just uh, financial calculators. This is the one, the TIBA2 Plus is the one I will instruct with, the one that I've provided notes for. Students want to use <coughs> their, the TI. TI-80 or 83. Um, I'm not going to provide instruction with it or TI-84, but um, you're welcome to use that too. If this was an in-person class, I would stress using this one. Now, why do I use this one? Does anybody know why I picked this one? TIBA2 plus. <clears throat> yes, Paula, if you buy the the tablet calculator, you can use it for the test. That's fine. <clears throat> Okay, you can. So the one on the tablet, I think, is free. Um, the one, <clears throat> the one on the smartphone was like fifteen or sixteen dollars. And why not, right? We have some advantages. We're going to use electronics, <clears throat> even though I don't mention it here. I will also show you how to use Excel at some points. Um, it's not a required thing, but most of you will have Excel, so you can use it. But for um, this course, the instructional calculator will be this one. And does anybody know why?
Exactly, Juan. That's because it's one of the two official calculators for the CFA exam. So I, I feel it's my responsibility to prepare you for that exam, should you be interested in writing it. Okay, so um, the, other ex the other calculator for the CFA exam is the HP 10B2, the Hewlett Packard 10B2, I think that's what it's, the symbol is. Um, the, um, this is more expensive, but I would say it's easier to enter data on this one. Okay, so you get something value for your money. This one um, is probably double the price. You can get this on a tablet too, or a smartphone. It costs a little bit more, but it does have a, it's, it, there's an ease of calculation plus it it handles, what is it that, um, oh, it does, um, trying to think, what is it that it does? Do? Oh yeah, weighted, weighted. Yeah, this makes weighted average calculations. I have to put the screen up, right? So the advantage, this is more expensive, but it's easier to enter the, the values and it conducts weighted statistics. So weighted mean, uh, weighted standard deviation, weighted correlation, it does all these calculations on here. Um, but I will, again, I will focus on this one. It's cheaper and it does almost everything you need. This is an added bonus for the other calculator. Yeah, there's a plus on it, right? So, in classes, I will provide instruction with this one. If people want to, the information for this, I can provide you, I have some notes uh, I can share. But in reality, there are YouTube videos of instruction on both of these calculators, okay? So there's also that option. So let's see, um, what are your comments about that? So I'm gonna teach with this one. This one will give you an idea how to use this one. You also have the You'll have the manual for this one if you own it already. So these are the calculators that are recommended for the MECU classes. And you probably spent more than $100 on them. So you maybe want to use them. But again, this one is the one I'm choosing because it is for the CFA exam. You are allowed to bring in this one or this one, the HP 10B2+. And this has the added advantage of the weighted statistics. So it's up to you which one the only reason I mean I used to teach with this one and require this one but I felt bad for students that had paid so much for this one I, I chose this the cheaper of the two calculators this one is not um, the TI 83 and 84 are not acceptable because they are programmable that's why uh, they're restricted And what people will do with a programmable calculator is include notes. They can include programs. They can include, they, it's just a, an unfair advantage if students have um, these calculators and they could cheat. Um, Miguel was asking about where to buy the, the textbook. So you'll buy that and connect, and I will give the information. I have to send you the information on how to do that.
if you want the physical book, I'm, no I'm working on it, getting it through McGraw-Hill. Otherwise, um, it, in Amazon, I think you can get it. Maybe the international copy? I actually don't know if you want the physical book. I haven't looked. I'm trying, I'm fighting to get it for you through McGraw-Hill for a discount. All right. Uh, Diego's asking about the CFA exam. Um, what I can do is, in terms of the CFA exam, maybe I can have a presentation. I can, I can invite the members of the CFA Institute to discuss that one day, okay? I can I can have someone come in and talk about the CFA exam and the structure. We can set up a call like that. What do you think? That's what I'll do. And uh, you can have more details from the source, from the people who actually make the questions. <laughs> okay? Okay. I'm going to make a note. Okay. Okay, so I mentioned here you need the textbook. Oh, this is my bilingual, uh, my bilingual prontuario. Uh, you need the textbook, the calculator, the financial calculator, uh, a computer, internet access, and a printer. You probably have to print out the test, right? To, either write on it or um, to have it in front of you. So the test will be printable. And also the, 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 um, the documents I give you, I leave space on the document so you can write directly onto the documents. including formula sheets and tests. So I'm going to, I'm going to be, well, I did provide you with an initial formula sheet. <coughs> and um, <coughs> and um, you can build up the formula sheet. So I just give you an initial idea what a formula sheet can have on it. And um, we'll talk about that when we get to it in more detail. These are the topics that we'll cover as they connect to the textbook. So these are the chapters of the textbook. I, I, the lectures that I give you, the notes that I give you are the most important items. You can view these as reference, okay, for the class and you need these chapter references for um, writing the, the, the assignments, to, for preparing the assignments and connect. For the assignments, um, I give you two attempts to complete the assignments, and they are uh, multiple choice questions mostly. I think that I usually I give just multiple choice. Um, and otherwise, you have an opportunity to solve problems in the problems that I give you. I always give you review problems with everything I teach. So, this is the distribution. You can let me know if it adds up to 100. The distribution of grades. So the connect problems, 10%, uh, and they'll be due whatever day I, I assign them, they'll be due on one or two Thursdays after, depending how long the assignment is, until midnight. The first test is worth less than the other tests. 
I give you a little time to build up your skills. And as the pr the first skills are are our foundation for the later later topics. So that adds up to a hundred, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if there's a group of WhatsApp, but you guys, you guys usually sort that out, right? Chris wants wants to know. All right. So. My recommendation to you is you start preparing a formula sheet that you can use as a quick reference for writing uh, the tests and ultimately preparing for the final exam. The final exam you see um, will be worth 30%. So it's worth more than everything. It'll be cumulative covering all the topics of the previous exams but I, I won't make it as, as hard. These are more challenging. So I put here approximately what it sh the time that it should take you, um, even though I'm allowing you six hours, uh, it should only take you one and a half hours for each of these tests. The final exam will be um, timed and you'll have three hours to complete it. And it's worth 30%. So by the last test, you would have covered m all of the topics. Uh, maybe I'm going to add one more thing, one more in the last week. Add one more thing and then talk about review. And, uh, and then the final test will be cumulative. Cumulative. All right, so if you miss anything, if you miss a um, connect assignment or if you miss a test, I will give you a grade of zero unless you have a valid reason provided with documentation, you will get zero in that component, right? There will not be any retests. I don't have time for that, unfortunately. Um, and it's just not fair. It's really hard to create another test that's similar now because of this distance learning paradigm, this creates a, a much greater challenge for me because I have to make new tests every semester because I do share the tests and solutions with all the students. So if um, some students who have other f friends and who took course with me will have advantage um, because they'll have the old question papers and the solutions and that just doesn't seem fair enough to me. Um, it's better that I provide all of those questions and answers to everyone and then uh, ask different questions. So I have to create new questions every time. So I am not going to provide a retest for that reason, okay? What will happen if you have a valid reason for missing a component is that the percentage weight will be added to the final test. All right. But as I said, by that time, the final test, if you've learned adequately, up until that point, the final test will just be a review of the main topics. Oh, let me add that in, in Connect, the advantage of Connect is that I get to randomize the questions. So everyone gets slightly different questions, or at least the order is different. And then also the, the elements or the variables or values in the problems are slightly different. Tanya, you still in the final test, in the final test, you can use everything just like the other tests. The only thing is I have to make sure it's you. That's, that's what it, that's the point here. I won't lock your, your, um, I will not lock uh, your computer. Okay.
what I'll do is ask you to show me, uh, once you turn on the computer and the camera, you'll show me your student ID displayed for a, don't know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and then you can start writing the test. I just need to know it's you writing, that's all. All right. All right, in terms of grade appeal, so if you think something was unfairly graded or if you find an error in the clave for the test, you can appeal your graded material up to two days following the correction. Okay, so when, when you, once you receive it, review it immediately. Okay, you have two days to get back to me. I cannot let it leave it open that long. It just becomes unfair. The point is that the grader <coughs> will have a, an approach to grading each question to maintain consistency. And then if you come back, you know, weeks later to get points, he may have forgotten what he did. And it's just not appropriate to ask him to dig up everything to give you some points later or not give you points in the end because um, he graded everyone the same. All right, so I encourage you to approach the material in the course with enthusiasm. You come alert, you come awake, have your tea or your coffee or something. Uh, you know, peppermint tea is herbal, but it'll wake you up. And um, I noticed that there's not a lot of tr tea drinking here, but... Uh, it can serve the purpose. I do not recommend having a cola in the morning <laughs> to wake you up. I had a, there was a girl in my program when I was studying mathematics and every morning she showed up with Dr. Pepper and chips. Terrible, terrible diet, but I kept her going. Um, I'm just reading through. So all the videos are available in this playlist. If you scroll down, you'll see that I've been teaching on YouTube for the last two semesters before this. So you have lots of videos. If you have time on your hands, you can go through all those videos, but um, I will be repeating um, pretty much what I said there, except you know, when there's some review class materials, I might have solved different problems. So anyway, if it interests you, the videos are there. And I'm repeating what I said. Okay, so um, please let me know if you need additional help and let me know early enough that I can contact the teaching assistant that can offer virtual tutoring or um, I can work with you as well if it's just uh, you know, temporary or just something. Usually students just get stuck on one concept and they don't I don't know they're just blocked and they they can't learn that topic and so it's just a matter of resolving some misunderstanding or some problems it's just one hurdle that they need to overcome and then the rest falls into place so sometimes I can resolve most issues but if you'd like tutoring I can make that make it so the teaching assistant is available and especially for the the language if you need that help with the language and that's it. I'm going to use the regular scale for grading. Most students in my classes get an A, B, or C. If you're really not getting it, or there's just huge obstacles to overcome, you might get a D. Very rarely do I give an F in this class. Okay. Um, these are the reglamentos I had to put in that you're familiar with. And that's it. So, any questions? The time for the final Diego will be just, it'll be, it will be three hours. 
um, on Connect. And everybody will have to sit for the same three hours. So it, it's going to be scheduled in the the schedule for the, the recinto. Okay, so it, everyone should be available at that time. All right, so we, that's an hour. One hour to discuss a prontuario, to invite you to the CFA Institute event. Or sorry, it, it's actually the, the society. The society in, is part of the institute or aims to be part of the institute. They're not officially a part of the institute yet, but they're using the CFA Institute um, format to offer the ethics challenge. So you're getting the real deal. All right, no questions? I'm going to open up the... That's not it, okay, wait. I have to remember where I put things. All right, so this is the formula sheet I shared. It's just an example. of the sort of information I will permit on your formula sheets well, in a regular situation where I actually allow you to have a formula sheet. I guess here I'm not going to monitor you, but it's a recommendation. This is how you prepare your formula sheet. So these are this is the basic time value money formula that we're going to talk about net present value, perpetuity. So you should these should all be familiar from 3106. The only one that is new would be this one, if you didn't learn it in 3106, but the rest should be familiar. Okay. So this is the document that I sent to you. And essentially I'm going to be teaching you how to use the calculator and how to solve financial problems at the same time. How many of you can you let me know how many of you actually have the calculator or financial calculator at your disposal right now? at least the, the TA, TI BA2 plus. Let's see how many of you actually have it. Okay, so people who have the TI-84, do you know how to do financial calculations on it? T-84. 
TI-83 or 84. Hmm. So what do you have to do there is very similar to what we do here. It's just done in a different way. Okay. Okay, what I'm going to do is delay talking about the calculator until you all find your your calculator and instead let's let's talk about the time value of money. So nobody has the BA2 plus. I have to think about how to deal with that. Um, well, you have a week to get the BA2 plus or to get the app or to learn how to use the TI-84. I think that's the best the best way to explain this. I do have some I do have some notes, but I don't like to spend too much time teaching all the calculators. I just want to use one. And you know what? I'm going to I'm going to do that. Let's let's just talk about time value of money right now. And then, um, and I'll I'll stick with the BA two plus as a reference, and then people who have trouble using their calculator to get the same calculations can let me know, and I can share information I have on how to use the other two calculators. Well, the the programmable one and the HP, if that's what they have. If you go, like I have, if I go in my iPad to App Store, and that didn't work. I have to write TI. TI. I. B A. 2 plus. Well, I don't know why it doesn't come up. How did I write it? Finance calculator. And so you see the, okay, so this is the BA2 plus emulator. This is the HP here. This is the HP professional. You know what, I probably got the BA2 Plus for free because I paid for the other one <clears throat> on my iPhone. So I have it here. Yeah, I paid $16 or something. Yeah, so you, let's take, um, So what I'm going to, yeah, you eBay, you have Amazon, you have the store, you can find it at the store. You can check in advance to see if it's in stock. 
Best Buy, Office Depot. There's other stores that I don't know of that probably have it. Okay. Okay, Christopher. So what you need for the WhatsApp group are the phone numbers, right? I don't know if those phone numbers are your mobile numbers, though. That's the thing. Okay, Juan. Thank you, Juan. Office Max for $40. Erica, can you get in touch with Christopher to help him get the WhatsApp? Very strange what just happened. Um, so Erica says you have the WhatsApp group. Chris is having trouble getting in. Let me know if there's anything I can do to connect you. So you have access to all the emails for the class. Is that correct? Or do you, are you able to connect with each other through the portal? I don't even know how you guys communicate. Do you get it from the SIS, SIS system? From TerraTerm? Anyway. Okay, yeah, put the put the link here. Yeah, put the link in the chat if that helps. Okay, uh, let's let's take 5 minutes you guys sort that out. If you need me, I am available. Let's take a five minute break, get that tea, water, lemon water, whatever it is. Let's take a break.
Okay, I'm back. I sent the invite for the chat. I hope I did that correctly. And um, and that's that. I didn't know that WhatsApp could be on the computer, but now I know. I just know about it on the phone. I'm just checking some emails. I have many things to check. Oh, that image doesn't get big. Students sent me a picture of a calculator. BA2 plus. Image looks weird. Yeah, the BA two plus professional calculator is fine. You can also try and buy them from other students or check on Marketplace and Facebook or however. Students trade secondhand things. You could probably find the calculator. I'm going to say, I'm just going to check. It's a BA2 plus professional. I mean, it doesn't have to be professional, I guess, but I don't actually, at this point, I don't know the difference. So BA2 plus, whether professional or not, will be the right calculator. Okay, Tanya, I, ro I wrote you back. All right, so shall we start? Okay, I'm here. Mm, let me position myself. Right. Time value of money. So this is the foundation of finance. There's mathematics and the uh, specialization that uses mathematics and economics is finance. The idea of money through time is the foundation of finance. The, the fact that there are people, there are different types of people, a person who, who wants to consume today and forfeit future consumption, and other people who would forfeit today's consumption to consume more tomorrow. The fact that there's these two different types of people, people who want to consume today versus people who want to consume, uh, who, who can forfeit today's consumption for tomorrow, creates a marketplace for finance, right? So we begin 
looking at a timeline, looking at the horizon, and you've probably seen this before, you must have seen something like this before, since you've taken 3106. Refresh your screen, because I cleared off the notification of a break, but it did not update on my screen. So anyway, routinely update your screen. It seems it needs an update. Okay, um, so here we are. I'm going to review the basic timeline. It looks boring. You've seen this before. <clears throat> But it is rather profound. When I start mixing things up, you'll see the reason I do this. Okay, so we start here. We're here. This is us now. Zero. Zero now has a perspective. If you look back, it's the end of the previous period. It's the end of period zero. So the word end marks or numbers the period. Okay, so it's the end of period zero. Then period one transpires to the end of period one. You see, each mark denotes the end of a period in the way that I've prepared this timeline that I'm going to use and that you see on your formula sheet. Then Period two begins and ends. Here's the end of period two. So that's like looking backward, right? This ends period one. This mark ends period two. But there's also the perspective looking forward. I can refer to this mark as the beginning of period one and then mark period one transpires and this is the beginning of period two. Now if I refer to it as the beginning it doesn't coincide in number with what I'm saying. It does however correspond with what's written here. So beginning of period two, period two transpires and then ends or begins period three. Right, so simple, not a big deal, don't forget it. Now I talked about the two types of people. The people who want to consume now versus those people who are prepared to forego consumption and consume later. So this is the price that they pay, right? And those ones who will trade off current consumption for consumption later. So the fact that these two types of people exist creates a marketplace where people can trade off consumption. There's a price, right? When you trade, there's a price, and the price of that trade we call what?
It's the interest rate. The interest rate. The interest rate is the price you can charge for foregoing current consumption. You can find someone to make a deal or a trade in this world. So what I'm doing is I'm going to simplify things. In reality, there's many interest rates. If you're willing to set aside consumption today and put that money away either in savings or investment, you can earn a rate of return. There's many rates of returns out there. Okay, What I'm going to do is simplify things in a model. So I just give you this scenario and I tell you there's one interest rate available, 8%. And I say, what is $1,000 invested today because of that prevailing interest rate? What is $1,000 invested today worth in two years? And most of you know how to do that, but I'm going to do the steps. And I'm going to ask you, that's the first question. The second question is, what is the simple interest? And the third question is, what is the compound interest? So I'll give you a, five minutes to think about that. and then we'll regroup.
Okay, how did you do? I'm back. Okay, what about the other questions? What about simple interest and compound interest, not just the first one? Okay, so you need to distinguish between the principal and the interest. The simple interest and the compound interest make up the total interest, okay? So you figured out, you guys know most of this, right? You know that I, after one year, I have to take a thousand and um, if I have to return or sorry, if I invest a thousand, I should get after the first year a thousand plus interest on the thousand. Right at eight percent. That's how that works. Now you learn how to write that differently. We write it like one thousand and then one point zero eight, right? Because mathematically, you imagine that there's a 1 here, and I can factor out the 1,000. All right, there's a 1 there. I can think out. And so I can factor out the 1,000. So that's fine. Then in the second year, <clears throat> oh, well, I could even figure out what that was. What's 1,080? So after the first year, this should have accumulated to 1,080. When I say two years, it implies that I reinvest this amount and accumulate another 8%. So I'm going to reinvest the 1,080 and then that gives me 8% on the 1,080. Right, so it's really 1,080 times 1.08. But 1,080 was 1,000 times 1.08 times 1.08, which I could write as 1,000, 1.08 squared. Is everybody okay with that so far? So we have an understanding after one year I get 8% interest on my principal so that's called the principal amount and I get 8% interest on that and I get one thousand and eighty dollars in the second year I reinvest the thousand eighty and over this year I accumulated interest that's stated at the end of the year now th 
That doesn't have to be the case, but that's the assumption I make here, okay, that it's earned here. It could be the agreement of the investment as stated. So I get um, that 1,080 plus 8% on the 1,080. And then I just make the link that that's the same as just taking the original 1,000 times 1.08 two times. And I get my final answer that sounds like most of you got it. It's 1,000. 164.40. And now, what portion of that is considered simple interest and what portion is compound interest? That's the next part. Okay, let's start the easy way. Let's, let's write down what the total interest is. So what's the total interest? So this, this represents the accumulated amount. This is the total accumulated amount. This is how much it's worth. So what's the total interest? Very good. 164.40 is the total interest. Now I want you to split it up into simple interest and compound. And they should add, they should sum to make the total interest. So what do you think? Don't be shy <laughs> to write, even though you might get it wrong. You're going to learn something. I'll tell you, it's usually the, the students who respond, even if they get it wrong, and students who complain or ask lots of questions that do well in the class. Okay. So don't feel shy about writing in the, the wrong answer. The point is to try and test yourself. There's, you know, there's understanding at different levels and sometimes when you express yourself, you understand better than someone who just, who doesn't express themselves. Okay, I, I'm gonna, you, you mostly have it wrong, but let's see. So the way that I've done it has distracted you, right? Because you're looking here. No, the simple interest, does not account for the effect of compounding. Okay, so it treats, the interest rate as though each time I have a thousand dollars to invest in period one and two. So simple interest is just 
taking the thousand, timesing it by uh, 08, and then it's two periods, so I just times by two. So in general, it's the principal amount, which I'll call PV, and then uh, multiply by the interest rate, which I use I, and times the time period, T. That is simple interest. So that is, in our case, very simple, right? 160, anybody can make that calculation. Everybody okay with that? Now you could easily com uh, calculate the compound interest as the total minus the simple. And that leaves the interpretation. What is that? Very good. So, so most of you didn't get it, so don't feel bad, right? Most of you didn't get it. You didn't realize that. So this is called simple interest. The compound interest, and it might just be the language um, that you never heard that term before. Um, the compound interest is what's left over. So compound interest would be equals uh, total interest minus simple interest. And you told me correctly that it's going to be Just a typo, a typo already, I have a typo. This is a six. Um, not sure I was copying. I should never follow the student calculations because then I make a mistake. I have to use my notes. So this is going to be one six, one one six, six forty. And so this is Correction, either that was in the chat or I misinterpreted it from the chat. Okay, and I'll talk about how to put that in your calculator in a bit. So let's make those corrections first because it's 1.08 to the power of two times 1,000 that gives you the answer. One one six six forty. Yes. Yeah, I copied it wrong, but it was in the chat. Okay. So everybody's okay with this. I'll show you. Let me let me get this calculation before I continue. So if I was to do this on um, with my calculator. Not this one. And I would put 1.08 on the screen and then y to the x, this key, and power 2 would give me this factor that I multiply to 1,000. That's how I get that answer. I should calculate it every time to avoid confusion. All right. 
So that's the answer there. And then the total interest is um, not 1,000. It's just the, the leftover, the 1, uh, 166.40. We figured out the simple interest, and so you know by just simple multiplication, the compound interest must be And now I want you to tell me what is this, what is 640? Interpret 640, $6.40. So one is asking, is it okay to say that there's no compound interest for period one? That's right, exactly. So there's no compound interest for period one because compound interest is what we say is the interest on the interest. So that doesn't happen yet, right? So compound interest is the interest, it's called, it's the interest on the interest. So if you don't have interest, you don't have compound interest. So that's the interpretation I have for you of the 640. And you can calculate it by the the $80 here times the interest rate. And let me check the chat if anyone said that. Okay, some confusing. Okay, so some people had the right answer all along. And um, some people were confused with interest on interest. So you can calculate this doing this. Let me, let me make this, let me show you how the advantage of having my tablet is that I can make things bigger and smaller. So one way to do this is the total interest which is 166.40 minus 160 equals $6.40. Or it's the interest on interest, so it's going to be the $80 times 0 0.08, and that will give it to you as well. All right? This is the downside that I lose something. Got it? Questions? Now we're clear what is <clears throat> uh, compounding, what is total interest, 
what is simple interest, and what is compound interest. Any questions? I have a heck of a time with these things separating. This is the downside of live stream. So you see me figuring things out in real time. So you can take a screenshot. Some students have asked for these notes. Um, I just think they're really big files and they're hard to share. I'll try and save them in case you want to see them. But the timestamps should help you with the video as well. And I don't even have this on the screen. There. All right, so we, you knew this. So this is how it's going to go. You have an intuition for calculations, right? You have an intuition for finance. You might have some misunderstandings or some gaps, and I'm going to work on filling those. But relying on your intuition or correcting your intuition, that's what we're going to do. So just jump in, try the problem, and we'll correct any misunderstandings as we go. And that way you won't make the mistake again because you'll know where you went wrong. So the 640 is the is the um, the compound interest. Okay. All right, so let's see what we've talked about so far is the, <clears throat> the time value of money looking from the present to the future, All right? So let me formalize a few things. This is what we talked about. This is the timeline. I'm going to put some notation. So this is a very simple problem, and we're going to we're going to use it to develop a systematic approach to solving a variety of problems. So we need to uh, establish a, a formula for doing that. So I'm going to start naming things. I'm going to name this thousand dollars present value, and I'm going to note. It's at time zero. So the subscript is used to denote time. So zero for now, or the beginning of your horizon. By time one, end of period one, you have, from perspective today, there's a future value. The future value at time one would be 1,000 times 1.08. The future value at time two is 1,000 times 1.8 squared. So FV is future value. And again, you might feel like you know this stuff and you're bored. Just hang in there. Just the review is never bad. And you can keep me on my toes, find my errors, because <laughs> I will make them. Um, OK, so FV is future value. PV is present value. Or sometimes you could say principal. Principal. Okay, so that's the terminology we're going to use. Um, to make it even more general, I'm going to add in the notation for the interest rate 
or the rate of return or the agreed upon price of foregoing consumption as I and the T for any period in time. So this is the general formula at any point um, now, sorry, from now to some point in the future T. This is the basic time value of money formula for accumulation. And you know where it comes from. You can always think of this example. Let's take a moment to do this um, with the financial calculator. I just showed you how to do it on a basic you know, using the analytical portion of the calculator. Let's try this on the financial calculator. For the calculator that you have, um, identify where you can enter this for the financial mode. And what you want to do, because calculators are pretty standard when it comes to finance, you want to tell the calculator the number of periods. You want to tell it the interest rate over the period. Um, you want to tell it the present value. And whether there are any payments. There were no payments in this problem. This problem was just a, a lump sum amount accumulated. This is something else. Payments are for when there are um, problems of mortgages, problems of uh, where payments are involved. Here there are no payments in this problem. So what I want you to do is try and figure out how to use the financial mode on your calculator to get this answer. So we're taking full advantage of this very simple problem to learn how to use our calculator. We've done this analytically, like just using formula. Now let's use the financial mode and see if you can get this answer. One thing to point out to you is this. Why is there a negative here? Does anybody know? Thank you, Miguel. Very good. Okay, Yaira suggests that it's it has to be a negative. You need to tell your calculator that this is an investment, so it's a, an outflow, a cash outflow so that the calculator can demonstrate to you that your answer is a positive or cash inflow to you. So an investment now results in a return later. Your calculator needs to balance these sides of the equation and you'll see when I solve for different variables why that's important. Okay. So it's because it's a cash outflow or desembolso. All right, so I will give you a few minutes to enter that on your calculator following uh, Miguel Rios has provided some instructions to try that and let me know that you've got the answer and I'll wait for about 15 people to tell me they've got it to continue.
Okay, so I have one person who's got it. I'll give you guys some time. Like I said, I'll wait for 15 of you to tell me you've got it. And you must use your financial mode. It's time to learn how to use a financial mode on your calculator, not the not just the formulaic. Okay, you need to know you, the for, formula. You know from 3106, but I want you to learn how to use the calculator because we can do much more complex problems, and we will do much more complex problems. And you need the financial calculator. All right, very good. I see you're chatting with each other, figuring it out. I see I see about 10 people said okay, but there's 34 people watching. Let me know. Let's see another five people got it. 
So you've noticed that you have to put a negative in front of the present value amount. You've also, some of you noticed that you have to enter whether this is end or beginning accumulation. Assume it's end unless told otherwise, okay? Assume end of period accumulation or compounding unless you're told otherwise. All right? So this is like I told you. Be, you have to be aware of that timeline, right? This is all set up, this formula is set up with that exact timeline precisely this investment at time zero end of period one accumulation period two transpires end of period two accumulation which is not necessarily the case right you could um, accumulation could take place at different points in time but if I write this formula that's what I've assumed or that's the information that I've been given to assume or use All right, so most of you got it. Figured out how to use your calculator. If you want to stick with that calculator, um, <clears throat> you just have to learn how to use it, okay? As I explain, learning the BA2 plus is helpful for the CFA exam. There are no payments in this problem. All we have is one cash flow and we watch it accumulate. Otherwise, nothing happens um, here. All that happens is accumulation, but no extra payments or anything. It's nothing. It's just this amount that grows and grows. So a problem with payments would be um, something like you invest this and then you get payments from let's say you invest this to um, buy something that you rent out and so you get payments for rentals something like that that we'll look at that's not happening here and if you see again if you see your screen blurry or Oh, I'm talking about something that's not on the screen. Just refresh the screen. Refresh your page. All right, so most people got it. Half. Anyone need help? So the way it works on the, the BA2 plus is with N is for time, even though the formula has a T in it. Um, interest is eight and it's assumed per year. The present value is a negative, which is on most financial calculator. You have to enter zero into payment to tell um, the system, tell the calculator that you're not uh, using a annuity formula. That's the formula for, for payments. but we're just using the basic time value of money. I call this the basic formula, the basic time value of money formula. And then you ask the calculator to compute and then uh, ask for future value and it should give you this number, which you interpret as a dollar sign. This is the accumulation of a investment. You found the future value. Okay, so um, no one's expressing confusion, so I will continue. So this was uh, the summary of what we talked about, simple interest, oops. 
simple interest calculation, and the compound interest calculation. All right, so what we did so far was use the time value of money formula to find the future value of an amount. What if we want to find something else? I'm going to use the same formula with a different problem. Okay, so here's a different problem, same formula. So this is the fundamental or basic time value of money formula. But I'm going to ask a different question. I should be able to use the same formula, right? What is the value of $1,000 to be received in, in two years? From the perspective of today, in other words, what is the value of $1,000 to be received in two years? Okay, so let's see, if I can set this up, this would be my future value at t. I want the present value now. I didn't change, I didn't change the interest rate. It's still 8%. Can you find the future value, I mean present value. So you're finding a different variable using the same relationship. So you have this information, you have this information, and you have this information. Can you solve for the present value? Well, mathematically you can. You can find the present value, and then we're going to talk about what it means. So this is a variation of the formula. the same formula though. All right? Since you have the three variables, you can solve for the fourth variable. You can do this mathematically. Let's do that first. Let's put this in our calculator using um, just using mathematics, and then our, like this is the an analytical solution. I just isolate for one variable using the others. And then we'll use a financial calculator, and then we'll talk about the interpretation, and that will be it for today. Okay, so let's see. I want to use my financial calculator. I keep on taking the wrong one over here. Um, and what I want to do is take a thousand dollars and discount it. That's what it's called when you do this. So I want to take 1.08 to the power of 2. That didn't work. 1.08 to the power of 2. That's 1.08 to the power of 2. Remember that. That was the accumulation factor that I used in a different problem. But I want to make that be the discount factor. So what I'm going to do is invert it. I'm going to use the 1 over x key. You see this key? I'm flashing it. You see? So that key will give me the discount factor. It, it flips the quantity. Then I'm going to multiply that by 1,000, and that will give me 857.34, which most of you got. Very good. So this is called discounting. And 
the steps that I took were to get the discount factor and the way that I did that is I calculated this first and I used that key 1 over x on your calculator okay so let me do that again So the things that I'm showing you are very useful for the more complex problems. So try and learn them. Even though you can get the answer, try and learn this stuff. So what I did was 1.08 to the power using y to the x2. And then I flipped it. And that gave me the discount factor. And then I multiply that by 1,000. Okay, so this the keys that were important were the y to the x, so that's the power key and then, oops, I can't press that too many times, and the 1 over x to flip, because you can't flip 0, 1.08 to the power 2, flip. Okay, so those keys are important. All right. All right, so let me give a minute for people to get this result. Show me that you've got it. So I can continue. Some people are still finishing the other one. So let's see. Let's see if I can get 15 people to tell me they got the right answer. Okay, so you guys got it. All right, so so hopefully you used this method I'm teaching you, trying to teach you how to put it in analytically. Let's do this with um, the financial calculator now. We should know how to do both. Um, and then, no, let's skip that. Okay, so the financial calculator, these are the steps on page nine the calculator. On page 9, slide 18, it looks very similar, same thing. You have 2 in N, 8 in interest. Now present value is what you want, so leave that blank. There are no payments, so put 0 as a place mark. And now you're going to enter positive future value. right and ask for compute the present value it will come as a negative because you have to invest that amount to get a thousand in two years that's what the calculator thinks you're doing you have to invest so they're telling you negative to get a thousand in two years. So once you get this, tell me you've got this and I'll get back to the interpretation.
Okay, so you mostly got it. I got 10 people. Oh yeah, most of you got it. Yeah, you, so one, you get the discount factor by inverting the interest or accumulation factor, okay? All right, good. So you guys get this so far, but now, so what the interpretation I used here was I said, you invest this to get the thousand later, but that wasn't the question exactly. Even though I, I can make that interpretation, the question was, what's the value? What's the value? So what am I saying? In finance terms, value As, it, 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 saying something has value implies it's an asset. I don't have the thousand dollars, right? If I'm receiving a thousand in tears, I don't have it, but it has value. In terms of finance, it has value because, let me fix this. In finance, it has value because I know this is coming. And in this problem, I've presented no reason to believe it's not going to arrive in two years. And because of that, I have an asset worth this much. It's a discount because it's less, you know, it costs less than a thousand to get the thousand in two years. That's why we call it a discount, right? It's like a sale. We get a discount. Um, that captures the effect of the 8% interest. But do I really have 857.34 available to me right now? The interpretation is there's value in financial markets because I can borrow, oh, I spelled this wrong. Let me fix my spelling. There's value because of this potential to borrow against the thousand that I'm promised in two years. I know a thousand is coming. So technically, I could borrow 857.34, do whatever I want with it at 8%, and be sure to return that 857.34, which will be worth $1,000. So I'll have to pay back a thousand in two years, but that's fine because I'm going to be getting a thousand. This is the notion of borrowing against the thousand that I am promised in two years. And for that reason, I have value. Now, people might not do this, right? People, people don't, don't do this in reality because there's risks, there's uncertainties. But in this perfect world that I presented to you, that is possible. And even in the real world, it's possible with some risk of uncertainty. Um, you don't know what's going to happen between zero and two, but with what I presented to you, you could borrow against the thousand, borrow 857.34 at 8% because that's what's available in the market, do whatever you want with it, reinvest it, buy stuff, and then later when you get the thousand dollars, you pay back the loan. So that's why we would say this thousand has value today.
All right, so I can borrow against the $1,000 that's coming. I can borrow this amount, do whatever I want with it, knowing that I'm going to get, thousand, get the 1000 to pay back the loan. That is finance at work, okay? Now banks do this where they know they have, um, they have loaned out money and they anticipate they're getting the money back with interest and they're already borrowing against the interest that they're anticipating, okay? Banks, um, investors, or loan lenders can do this. So this is discounting and this is accumulation with an accumulation factor. Any questions? And you can watch this video again and again till you get it. And don't hesitate to do so. Okay, it's 11.43. If you don't have any other questions, um, I will stop the class here. In preparation for next class, make sure you have your calculators. One of the ones, uh, remember, the BA2 Plus is the one I want you to have. If you just want to use your other calculators that you have, it's fine to do that, but you need to have a financial calculator for this class, okay? I require a financial calculator because I'm going to ask you problems that you will not be able to answer with Excel. Or any other scientific calculator. So I'll stay on to answer any questions you have. Each week, go to the playlist and look for the uh, link for the class. If you didn't receive it in your email, you just find it there with the time. I will start on time, so please come on time. Sometimes I have technical difficulties like today. And um, I think I know why. So that's good. So it won't happen again. Juan wrote me, so the future value is like the collateral in the finance world. That's a strong statement. I have to think about if that's so encompassing. But in this problem, certainly that's how it's been treated, yes. Oh, Tanya, about the book. So I will write you an email when I get the information on the textbook. I haven't heard from the rep. Uh, don't worry so much about the textbook. Just work with the notes I gave you. So right now, you can, for this week, you can read through the rest of these notes. You can try the review problems. Just do, um, just do what you can this week. I'm going to pick up from here. But work ahead. Work ahead. Read notes. And um, if you come prepared to class, that's always better. So when I speak, you're much more engaged. Okay, so work with the notes I gave you. I will send some more documents for next class as well. For assistencia, um, yes, I'd like to see your names in the chat as a record. And um, 
we'll we'll have assignments before the assistencia. Um, like I have to, I have to report your attendance. So we'll have uh, an assignment. Make sure you complete the assignment because that might jeopardize your assistencia record with me. Jose, if you have the book, that's good. Um, you will have to get the connect code to to enter into the test, and um, so you should buy the book for the fifty dollars subscription. If you don't and you wait, there could be confusion. I had a student on the last day writing the test. She bought the book and she paid double the price. Don't let that happen. Okay, so as soon as I send you the link, you can set it up to buy the I mean, buy the $50 subscription for Connect and for writing the test. The physical book, I highly recommend people get the physical book if they borrow it from somebody or they can get a used book. It's hard because it's a new edition, but an old edition should be fine because since I'm not um, requiring you to do problems out of the book, it's all in Connect. Ariana, the, the due dates of the of the tests, uh, the assignments will always be on the Thursday of, uh, it'll be on a Thursday, Thursday night. Okay, so the due date would be on <clears throat> like midnight on Thursdays, and uh, it's not every Thursday. Just check the schedule to see the due dates, or check the list to see the due dates. But usually, I give two weeks to complete an assignment. Okay, Juan, well, I'll send information on the physical book, okay? So I'll look at that right now and send you a message. So other than that, I'll say good day, have a good week, have a good weekend, and keep me posted if you have any questions. Just work through the materials I've given you. Um, they're not for me to see. Pace yourself and attempt all the problems I give you, okay? Bye.